Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen. Hallelujah. Mighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, Almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into heaven, so may we also in heart and might there ascend, and with him continually dwell, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the hearing of God's word. The first lesson on this Sunday is from the first chapter of Acts. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So, when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. (laughs) 
The Psaltery reading for this, this Sunday after the Ascension is found on page 650 in the Book of Common Prayer. It is Psalm 47. We're going to read this. <laughs> um, let's do it by whole verse, and um, I will read the odd, and you will read the even number first. Clap your hands, all your peoples. Shout to God with a cry of joy. With the Lord most high to be feared, he is the great king over all the earth. He subdues the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is king of all the earth. Sing praises with all your skill. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. The nobles of the peoples have gathered together with the people of the God of Abraham. The rulers of the earth belong to God, and he is highly exalted. Amen. The epistle reading is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, found on page 148 in the New Testament of your Pew Bible. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. <clears throat> and for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what it you, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending a you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and they were continually in the temple blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. And I invite all of the children who are here today to come forward and sit with me on the steps up here for a children's sermon. It's really safe. It's really safe. Here we go. Well, how wonderful to see all of you here today. Oh, another child coming forward? Come on, Mary. <laughs> so I'm delighted that you're all here today on this special, special day. I know some of you are here because it's your grandmother's and grandfather's anniversary. Is that right? Are you all grandchildren? Friends. Well, special grandchildren, then, if you're friends. That's wonderful. And some of you I get to see pretty often. So anyone know what today is besides the anniversary celebration? Oh, it's well, it's Mother's Day, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, but, but she's a mother to someone who's really important, to someone that you date, do say Happy Mother's Day to, right? I mean, once you're a mother, you're always a mother, which is really kind of cool. But, you know, we, we believe, too, that there's lots of people here, maybe even some men can act as mothers, in people's lives by doing some wonderful things, some of the wonderful things that mothers do. But today is another special day, and it's it's a big word. I don't know if any of you know it. It's called the Sunday after Ascension Day. And do you all know what that means, what Ascension means? Well, it means simply kind of to go up, right? So it's the day that we celebrate Jesus going up into heaven. So I want to explain to you why that's such, such an important day. Anybody know what, I, I apologize if you all can't see this, you can look at it afterwards, but anybody know what these two people are doing? Well, they're playing, but it's a special kind of playing. No, they're they're racing, and you see this this little thing, Oops. this little thing here. I have I have one here. It's called a baton. Do you, do you know what kind of race that is, where a baton is used? No, it's called a relay race, and what happens is one person is carrying the baton and starts running. And there's another person further down the track 
waiting for the person with the baton. And when the person with the baton gets next to that second person, does just what they're doing here, passes the baton off to the next runner. And so then the first runner can stop and take a breath, but that second runner is then running. And that's called a relay race. The reason I'm telling you about the baton is because Jesus, when he went up to heaven, it was like he passed a baton on to his disciples. He sent the Holy Spirit to come so that Jesus, everything he taught the disciples, the disciples could then pass on to all the people they met. So it's kind of like that second runner in the race, they had the baton, right? And then those disciples all died and went up to heaven. And so they passed a baton on. Does anyone have any idea who the disciples are now? Who has the baton now? Anyone have any ideas about that? The people on earth, that's right. And especially the people in here, and especially all of y'all. So I happen to have a box filled with batons, and I want to pass them out so that each one of you will have one. And you, you can play with it, but when you go home, I want you to put it in a special place and use it as a reminder that you have been given the baton from disciples before you. And it's your job to teach people about Jesus. And the easiest way you can do it is by loving. By loving your mother or your father or your friends or even your grandmother, who you wish happy Mother's Day to, right? So just take this with you and put it someplace really special so that every time you see it, you are reminded that Jesus has passed that baton on to you, and 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 to you. And I actually have a couple more because I wasn't sure how many baton carriers would be here today. So if any of you adults want one, Mary, you're shaking your head. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, and Susan, too. Okay, so there's one left. <laughs> um, and I'll leave it here if somebody wants to take it. But take those batons and be gentle with them, okay? But be sure to put them in someplace special. Well, you're sitting here. You should have the other baton. Here. There you go. Put them in some place special to remind you of what? To remind you that, yeah, of God, and to remind you that you are a disciple. You are somebody to show Jesus' love. And you never do that by hitting each other with a bit. <laughs> so be very gentle with them, okay? And here are your Sunday school lessons. Um, pass these out. I, I think we have enough for everyone to get one. They may not all be age appropriate, but I think we'll work that out. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so I have to tell you that I almost made a terrible mistake today. That might be the second terrible mistake because the baton's might be a mistake. <laughs> but several years ago, I traveled to the country of Jordan.
for a friend's wedding. And it was an amazingly wonderful adventure. And after the wedding, I spent a few days sightseeing in that amazing country. I went to the beautiful ancient city of Petra. I went to the Dead Sea. I went to, went to Mount Nebo, where Moses saw the promised land. And I went to Bethany, the site that many scholars now believe is the site where Jesus was baptized. I found it deeply moving to be able to walk on land where Jesus walked. And although the spot where Jesus, some believe, was baptized is now a dry riverbed, it was truly amazing to stand where he might have stood, to stand where John the Baptist might have stood. I was so deeply moved by this that every time since that I have read that Jesus went to Bethany, I thought of his baptism site. Jesus went to Bethany to Mary and Martha's home. He went to their home and raised his friend Lazarus from the dead. He went to Bethany a few days before he made his triumphant entrance into Jerusalem, his Palm Sunday procession on the back of a donkey. And then today, in Luke's gospel, we just heard that he led them out as far as Bethany, and he ascended up to heaven. Now, I started to get pretty excited about this, and maybe it's just a priest thing, I don't know. But it was exciting to make all sorts of connections between baptism and the resurrection of Lazarus, between baptism and Palm Sunday, between baptism and the ascension. And I was even more excited when I remembered that the site of Jesus' baptism is also believed to be the site where Elijah ascended. Now, I was working myself up into a pretty fantastic sermon about all of these geographical connections. And then, just in the nick of time, I remembered and my sermon was ruined. But I remember that the site where Jesus was baptized is not called Bethany. Mm -hmm. It's called Bethany beyond the Jordan. And I started to think about the fact that Bethany beyond the Jordan is not in Israel. It is, in fact, on the east side of the Jordan River in Jordan. Jerusalem is on the west side of the Jordan River in Israel. So something just didn't seem to be right with this. So I looked at a map of New Testament times, and there it was right before my eyes, the huge mistake that I had made and on which I had almost built my sermon. There were two Bethanies, one in Israel, just a very short distance from Jerusalem, on the west side of the Jordan River, and one in the present-day country, Jordan, on the east side of the Jordan River. So the site of Jesus' baptism, the site of Elijah's ascension, is not where Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, and it is not where he went before his triumphant Palm Sunday march, and it is not from where he ascended. My sermon was ruined by geography. And then I realized that geography is precisely what the ascension is all about. Well, not actually geography, rather the absence of geography. And let me explain what I mean. Before Jesus ascended into heaven, his presence was geographically determined. You might say that his presence was geographically limited. He was either in Jerusalem or Galilee or Nazareth or Bethany or Bethany beyond the Jordan. But if he was in one place, he was not at the same time in another. His presence was limited by geography. Because of the ascension, because Jesus ascended to heaven and sent the Holy Spirit to be with his people everywhere, 
no matter where they were. Because he ascended into heaven, he was no longer limited by geography and instead can be with you and with you and with me and with people who are in Jerusalem or in Bethany beyond the Jordan or in California or France or Ukraine or Palestine. Jesus is no longer geographically limited. And that is truly incredible news. That means, as one scholar said, the great irony of the ascension is that in leaving the wall, Jesus became more present to it. It was only by leaving the world that Jesus was able to be with each and every one of us in a very personal, and you might even say in a very geographical way. And then consider one more thing, the position that Jesus was in as he left the world. Luke tells us that he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. He blessed the disciples. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up. Not after he finished blessing them, but while he was blessing them. No wonder the disciples were filled with joy. Jesus left, yes, but he started blessing and he continued blessing and he blesses still. Jesus continues to bless us every minute, every day of our lives, no matter where we are. And sometimes in the church, we take a moment to recall specific blessings to give thanks and to renew that blessing as we will do today as Mary and George celebrate the blessing of their marriage on this, their 40th wedding anniversary. Jesus blesses us still. The good news of the ascension is that Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, is present and is blessing each and every one of us, wherever it is that we might happen to be. Now, believing that, of course, is a matter of faith. And so, on this Sunday after Ascension Day, my prayer for each of us is that we will have the faith to see the ascended ever present, no longer geographically limited, and ever blessing Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that we will have the faith to see Jesus every minute of every day of our lives, no matter where we are geographically, emotionally, spiritually. And if we do have that kind of faith, our lives will be incredibly enriched wherever it is that we find ourselves. Amen. Page 358, let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God.
Christ, we are gathered together with Mary and George, who have come today to give thanks to God for his blessing upon their marriage and to reaffirm their marriage covenant. George, do you here in the presence of God and of this congregation renew the promises you made when you bound yourself to marry in holy matrimony? Mary, do you here in the presence of God and of this congregation renew the promises you made when you bound yourself to George in holy matrimony. We pray after me. We thank you, most gracious God, we thank you, most gracious God for consecrating our marriage in Christ's name and presence. Lead us further in companionship with each other and with you. Lead us further in companionship with each other and with you. With each other and with you. Give us grace to live together in love and fidelity. Give us grace to live together in love and fidelity. With care for one another. With care for one another. Strengthen us all our days. Strengthen us all our days. And bring us to that holy table. And bring us to that holy table. Where with those we love. Where with those we love. We will feast forever in our heavenly home. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And God the Father, who at creation ordained that man and woman become one flesh, keep you one. Amen. May God the Son, who adorned this manner of life by his first miracle at the wedding in Cana of Galilee, be present with you always. Amen. And God the Holy Spirit, who has given you the will to persevere in your love, and in your covenant with each other, strengthen your bond. Amen. May God, the Holy Trinity, the source of all unity, bless you this day and forever. Amen. Continue with the prayers of the people. Prayers of the Peoples, found in the Book of Common Prayer, page 387, we'll do form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of the Lord and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. In the bulletin, there is a prayer list. Today, we pray for J.D. Griffin, Sandy Marks, Jim Jeffries. Linda Sigmore, Joy and Carly Curtoy, Shane Curtoy, Andy Thomas, Andy Wooded, Adrian, 
like a field or a road and storms. And we also pray for Bishop Mother Curry, Reverend Gabe, Mother Saurus, Suzanne Simmons. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Turning to page 360 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us <laughs> confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. We call you for anything by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and my sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. I'm Father Joseph Rogers, the vicar here. It's so great to be with all of y'all this morning and to celebrate Ascension Day together, as well as Mary and George with their families. A few notes on communion. In the Episcopal Church, all baptized Christians are welcome to receive the bread and wine. Uh, everyone is invited forward to the altar. Uh, if you do not wish to receive communion, simply cross your arm, and I will offer you a blessing. Receive communion beginning on the lectern side from front to back, and then the pulpit side will go from front to back. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanksgiving on page 361. <laughs> Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. After his glorious resurrection, he openly appeared to his disciples, in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, there we might also be, and reign with him in glory. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. supper he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit. Be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Are there any announcements from the group? Again, I'm Father Joe, the vicar here. If I haven't had a chance to meet you and you're new to our church, I'd love to meet you at the doors after the service. Also grateful to my colleague Grace for the wonderful sermon. And if you're a visitor, she'd love to meet you as well. Please stand for your blessing and dismissal. God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.